second Men in Black movie was just sort of like a uh, just a bunch of shit shoved into a movie. Is that the one where, where Johnny Knoxville has a cartoon head? Yes. Is that the second one? That's the second one. Um, and yeah, that second movie is pretty awful. But this one, the, the, it was very focused. The storyline was very focused. The narrative was very straightforward. It wasn't just a bunch of crap shoved into a movie to make a sequel, which the second one felt like. Um, and Josh Brolin plays young Tommy Lee Jones in that movie. It's the, the highlight of the film. He's really great at doing his impression of Tommy Lee Jones. That's more than just an impression. It actually does feel like a character. Okay. How do you know my name? Do, do they still have um, Rip Taylor as the head of the uh, Man Black Organization? No, no. They, they wrote out Rip Torn. He's actually dead in this one. And I, I, I think they wanted to avoid working with Rip Torn because he likes to drink and gets confused thinks that banks are his house. Uh, you know, I've, I've been there. I, I once thought a person was a parking space. <laughs> so, Jay, what else did you see this year? I also saw the Paul Thomas Anderson film, The Master. Oh. Why do you say that? I don't know, everyone says it sucked. No, it doesn't suck. It's, it's, I want to watch it again because it was sort of a frustrating movie because it's a really great movie. Like, it looks great, it's well shot, but Paul Thomas Anderson knows how to put together a movie. Really great performances, and it's more of a character-driven story than it is a narrative-driven story. Um, and the relationship between Philip Seymour Hoffman and Juan Phoenix is, is really interesting and strong, their performances are amazing, but at a certain point in the movie it felt like, I don't know, I would say it, was, it felt almost like a shallow movie, like you get their relationship. Like, like shallow hell. What do you mean by a shallow movie? Well, I, it, once you get, once you understand their relationship, it kind of feels like the movie doesn't do anything for a long period of time, it kind of flounders around a bit. Um, and I, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's sort of it's a really obtuse movie, but really great performances. Uh, and, and Amy Adams is sort of the linchpin of the whole movie, I think. And that's sort of subtle the way that's handled, as far as her character and her character's motivations. So good movie, just it, it felt really loaded. Well, I of course cannot comment because I have not seen the mask. Yeah. I will say though that it's great to see a movie um, that is this well made and this. Smarts, but also features a scene where Joaquin Phoenix jerks off into the ocean and also tells people that he wants to fart in their face. It's funny because the same thing happened in Lincoln. Oh, really? But speaking of films with uh, good performances, I very, very recently saw This is 40 Year Old Virgin. Oh, yes, yes. Is that what it's called? That this is it's, the four, movie's called This is 40 Hours Long. This is 40 First Dates. Yeah. This is 40. It's the new film from, uh, what's his name? Judge Reinhold. Judge Reinhold. No, it's, it's from Jerry Maguire. Now, who's the guy that makes the comedy? Adam Sandler? No. Adam Sandler doesn't make comedy films. That's true. Uh, oh, Judd Apatow. That's his name. Yes, Judd, yeah. it's, it's the Judd Apatow film. Uh, I, I'm going to go with a non-recommendation on it. Stay far away from it. <laughs> um, but I enjoyed it a lot. I laughed a lot. Then so why would you not recommend it? Uh, it's like, vi it was like visiting, it was ironic because I watched it around Christmas time. It's like visiting your family. You go, you have some good times, but most of the time you feel like you're being punched in the face over and over. And that's kind of what this movie was. It was just a roller coaster ride of, of ups and downs of people yelling and screaming and then funny parts and then people fighting again and yelling and screaming and, and then some funny parts and some, some interesting characters. And the, the really good performances all around. Everyone in the movie is good. Tonally, some of the comedy stuff like uh, goes from unrealistic stuff to very realistic to silly, 
back to horribly unrealistic, back to realistic fighting. And it's just like, oh, I'm starting to get a headache. So, so what you're saying is they probably shot a ton of footage, a ton of improv, and then tried to bolt something out of it. Well, that's Judd Apatow. Have you seen my starfish? Where is my starfish? <laughs> so, Jay, I understand that you've seen a handful of smaller films that were not released um, the theatrically in theaters. What are those films? Please share them with us. Look to Jay. That piece of paper is blank. Uh, I also saw the comedy starring Tim Heidecker. And was it funny? No, that's the Iron Eagle. Oh. That's the title. Is, well, is why don't ironic. You, what's it about? Uh, it's it's a difficult. It's definitely a difficult movie to recommend because it's aimless. It's a very aimless movie, but it's aimless by design because it's about a character and his friends mm -hmm. and are also <laughs> aimless. Uh, and they're all horrible people. So it's it's a directionless movie about awful people. It's it's what they call a feel bad movie, and I like a good feel bad movie. It's it's sort of just uh, an examination of these people, these characters, uh, uh, specifically Tim Heidegger and uh, what you would call aging hipsters, the people that are sort of detached from everything and everything's a joke, and seriously, and how sort of pathetic that is when you're in your mid to late 30s um, and you never sort of learn to grow up. And it was interesting because you don't, I've never seen a movie that deals with those type of people this accurately. I, I know people like this. Um, Wasn't there a movie with um, something something with Green in the title? Uh, Greenberg? Yeah, Greenberg. Greenberg? Yeah, there's there's Greenberg with uh, Ben Stiller, and that's comparable, but it's not exactly the same. This is a movie that it felt more realistic. Yeah, this movie felt very real. In a way that makes <laughs> you're 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 watching it. So it's it's a movie that kind of makes you squirm. But uh, if you're you're into something like that, it's worth checking out. <laughs> and lastly, I saw a film just recently called Excision, which uh, I, I enjoyed so much it was almost depressing because it's the type of movie that I would like to make, or the kind of movie I, I should probably focus more on trying to get made. It's, it's one of those movies, and I think we all have those, that sort of almost feels like it's tailor-made specifically for you. Have you ever seen any movies like that? Mm, really? Yeah, it's Showgirls. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, and it's uh, about a... Because I have a horrible fear and disgust of the human body, I think we mentioned that before, and of, of disease and hospitals, and the movie's about an awkward high school girl that is fascinated by and obsessed with uh, medical procedures. And she has these uh, fantasy sequences about uh, surgery, where she sort of fetishizes or sexualizes surgeries, uh, uh, dry humping corpses and the like. And uh, but it's not a horror film. I, I thought I was going to watch a horror film, and it turned out to be more of sort of a satirical kind of family drama. Black comedy. Yeah, yeah, sort of dark. John Waters has a cameo as a priest, so that should tell you something right there. Uh, Tracy Lords plays the mom. She's very sort of over the top. She's a little hammy. Uh, compared to the tone of the rest of the movie, but the main actress in it I was completely unfamiliar with, but she's genuinely unattractive in the movie. Greasy hair, the way she sort of carries herself, her posture, and I looked her up afterwards because I had no idea who she was, um, and she's apparently on the 90210 reboot. She's a good-looking girl, a very attractive girl, but she's genuinely unattractive in the movie. Do we give a shout-out? What's her name? Uh, Anna something? Oh. It's not a perfect movie, it's a little unfocused, but her performance, that lead actress's performance, really sort of drives the whole, the whole movie. So it's another one that I would call a feel-bad movie. If you like movies that make you feel like shit, and you just want to take a shower afterwards, the comedy and excision... Are Fucking both, suck a uh, fuck. Excellent examples of that. God damn it. Well, Jay, let's look forward to 2013, then. I do understand that there's a lot of movies to look forward to in 2013. Yeah, uh, and, and those movies are? Oh, there's 
Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D. A Good Day to Die Hard. The Carrie remake. Another one? Yep. The Croods. Computer animated movie about cavemen. G.I. Joe Retaliation. Pain and Gain. After Earth. Directed by M. Night Shyamalan. Uh, the Fast and the Furious 6. Hangover Part 3. Grown Ups 2. Paranormal Activity 5. Thor 2. The Smurfs 2. Star Trek 2. Scary Movie 5. Uh, why? Holy cow. We were talking about movies for so long, I lost track of time. Yeah. It's like 11 o'clock. I got 11? Yeah. It's almost midnight. Mr. Plinkett, where are all of your guests? I don't know. Nobody's showing up to my party. Who'd you invite? Let's see. I got Jack Balance, Charles Durning, Ricardo Montalban, Richard Dawson, Jack Lutman, Gloria Stewart, These days, it's okay to do some things halfway, but taking prescriptions shouldn't be one of them. Half in the back. Jay, you think Tarantino needs to grow as a filmmaker beyond the grindhouse, uh, black exploitation, sex exploitation, 70s kind of uh, pulp obsession that he has? Well, I, I will say this. I, in a way, I'm sort of disappointed where his career has gone, because I think Reservoir Dogs, great movie, Pulp Fiction, great movie, uh, Jackie Brown is maybe one of his least loved movies, it's actually my favorite, it felt like a more mature mm -hmm. movie, uh, the characters aren't, you know, Tarantino's known for being, having cool dialogue and cool characters, and that movie, everybody's old, everybody's old and miserable, and Pam Weir's talking about having a fat ass, and it's wonderful, it, it feels real, it still has a lot of his elements, but it feels like a... Yeah. Uh, a, a more mature film and more mature characters and he's never really done that since no. um, but at the same time his movies are so good you can't really complain that much Right. everything he's done since then is still and he, and he still works in you know some humanity into these movies it always feels sort of like uh, real people trapped in an exploitation film <laughs> his films like I mean the end of Kill Bill the, the second one you know this is this badass chick with a samurai sword. She's slicing people apart. The movie ends with her crying on the floor. You know, so there are those elements, but I don't think he's ever gone as far with them as he did with Jackie Brown. Yeah, yeah. His, his films are highly entertaining, highly engaging, very well done. Um, but it's they are missing that that slice of reality, like Django Unchained. You know, I'm not going to walk away from it with a more profound experience uh, of the, the Civil War era yeah. violence or anything like that. It's it's culty stuff. Yeah. And his last movies have been that. Same with uh, uh, Glorious Bastards. Yeah. You know, good movie. It's not like Saving Private Ryan type movie and it got schmaltz and, and, and um, kind of heartwarming goo. Right. <laughs> um, but it's not, it's not meant to be taken realistically in any way. They're fun, but... Um, I think he could do a movie that's that's achieves the next level. And you're right, Jackie Brown is the closest thing to that. Yeah, I, I just don't think he, that's what he has any interest in doing. I, you know, that's fine. I guess as long as his movies don't suck, do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, it would be nice to see him uh, branch out a little bit. Yeah, I guess it's up. It's not up to anyone to to set the standards for what she, he should achieve. It's, right. That's up for him. Yeah. You know, to decide. So. But I, I, I agree with you on Jackie Brown. I remember when that movie came out, uh, you know, it was after Pulp Fiction, obviously, and uh, lines of college kids and people yeah. wanting to see it all going in and then all coming out. And then it's just a slow, boring movie come out. And, and I remember seeing it and I was like, what? This is not Pulp Fiction. And then I watched it again and I loved it. Yeah, it, it took a little while to warm up too because people were expecting another Pulp Fiction. Yeah, you have to be, movie. you have to have sort of a different mindset to yeah. watch uh, Jackie Brown. But I was just like really, really entertained by that movie. 
just su such a slow movie, such good characters. Yeah. Um, Sam scored and, twice. Uh, <laughs> re reserved on the violence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There was no gory shootout. And I love the gory shootout in Django Unchained. But oh, at one point, I was like, is this how it's going to end? <laughs> like, without, without the, the explosion of violence. Yeah. I was like, is it going to end? And there's that, there's that tension. Yeah. It's going to happen. And, and I'm like, is he going to have the, have the, 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 the willpower to not have it end in a gory, violent, and then he, nope. No. Here it comes. <laughs> and you're like, okay. And it's fun. It would have been a satisfying movie to see it end in a different way. Yeah. That doesn't involve that. Right, right. Again, it's hard to complain when what he's made is so entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> Fridge, bro. I have to eat everything. Got a little chicken? Keep that away from me no matter what. Okay. Give me that. No, let's go. Bon appetit. Mm. Right. I smeared it for you. Another movie I saw, which I would recommend, uh, even though I'm not a huge fan of Ben Affleck. I, I like Ben Affleck when he doesn't do schlock. And he hasn't done a lot of schlock lately. No, no, he's, he's kind of turned his career around. He's a director now. and He's doing a little more mature stuff. I like yeah. The Town. Um, that was a good movie. And he, he's in a new movie called Argo, uh, which is based on a true story about how they, they have a fake movie production in order to get uh, Iranian hostages safely out of Iran that are hiding in the Canadian ambassador's house. A uh, really kind of well-paced, slowly-paced movie. Um, a lot of tension. There's a lot of uh, crazy Middle East craziness going on, and he's got to get these people out. And uh, it's, it's, it's a really, you know, kind of gets your attention, and you watch it the whole time. It's a really well-made movie. Yeah, I, I would recommend that one, too. I, I like that. I've heard it's good. I haven't seen it, but... Yeah, yeah. You really believe your little story is going to make a difference when there's a gun to our heads? I think my little story is the only thing between you and a gun to your head. I saw Flight. Uh, it's a movie about drinking booze. Um, uh, I'm assuming it, it glorifies alcoholism, not right? Not really. No. no? Denzel Washington uh, is really good in the movie. Mm. Um you know, I saw the movie a couple months ago now, and I just, I don't care. Also in the enjoyable watch, but forgettable, was the movie Ted. Uh, which oh, did was, you see uh, Ted? Over Christmas. That's why I'm bringing it up. Okay. Well, I had seen Ted, and I didn't think you had seen oh, Ted. Oh, so we both have seen Ted. We've both Ted. seen Ted. We violated our recap rules. Um, I There's saw, no rules. Uh, yeah, I saw Ted, uh, and, you know, I laughed a couple times. Uh, See, this the, is the thing with Ted, though, was uh, it had a it had a really solid narrative. Yeah, it did. It did. And and I wasn't expecting that from uh, what, Seth Macaroni. And it was it was like let plug in all the cliches here. You know, it was an eighties movie. Guy lives with his girlfriend, and he wants to get the girl back. And then yeah. blah, 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 blah. you know, so just plug in all the plot points. It was that kind of movie, but in which I wasn't expecting. It had a, yeah, it had a very, very traditional narrative in a way that's that's good. It felt like a sort of classic comedy as far as the structure and the tone of it goes. It felt like you're watching one of those movies that people have seen yeah. a million times. Um, the chemistry between Mark Wahlberg and the bear, I thought, was really good. Uh -huh. uh, I, I believed them. I kind of forgot I was watching a cartoon bear after a while. So all those things are nice. It was, I would say, it was charming. It was a charming movie, mm. uh, but I, I did not laugh once throughout the entire movie. Pop culture references are not jokes. Yeah, there was a lot of non-jokes. Yeah, there it was. That's the whole movie was that. It was oh, the Asian guy has a duck, and the duck's name is James. No. Duck. Okay, what's the joke? Yeah. Um, or at the end. Spoilers, at the end, there's a it. dramatic confrontation between the guy that wants to steal Ted away from Mark Wahlberg's character, and at a certain point, Ted gets ripped in half, and he's laying there on the ground, and you're like, oh no, Ted, but then he says, oh, I feel like that alien, or I feel like that robot in Aliens, uh -huh. and you're like, 
this is not the appropriate time for a pop culture reference. Yeah, yeah. That isn't a joke. It's just a reference. And that's what that whole movie felt like to me. Yeah, every now and then a, a dumb thing that happened would make me chuckle. I, I think there was someone farted in the movie. And it I'm made, sure somebody and it made farted. me laugh. Okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, I was watching it with a group of people, um, mostly uh, middle age to older adults. Uh, and there was lots of dead silence, lots of pockets of dead silence. And then everyone fell asleep. Um, I, I stayed awake, uh, most of it, primarily all of it, <laughs> mo most of it. I don't remember the parts I may or may not have slept through, but I did, I did, I was like, oh, you know, whatever. I, I think I just don't like Seth MacFarlane's style of comedy. I, the people that like Family Guy, and it's just... <laughs> I can't wait to not watch this. Yeah. Oh, hi, Mr. Plinkett. What are you doing? Well, I'm getting ready for my New Year's Eve party, of course. I'm inviting 50 of my bestest friends ever over. Oh, well, we were going to work on the VCR if it's not going to get in the way of the party. Uh, that's fine, I guess. Just make sure you're out of here by 8. We're going to have a gay old time watching Dick Clark's Rockin' New Year Eve. Mr. Plinkett, Dick Clark is dead. Oh. Oh, we watch Bob Hope then. Whatever. Hurry up and get to work. All right. Bob Hope. Oh, he's crazy. Oh, God damn it! I can't What's fucking that? make a line. What the, the hell? hell? Is this? I don't starring an old, leather-skinned corpse. The premise is simple. A small-town sheriff and a few of his officers are the last chance to stop a dangerous drug cartel guy from escaping across the border and back into Mexico. The moral of the story? Stay true to your convictions, revenge is always okay, and shoot guns everywhere. Why not? Mike, what did you think of the last movie we saw? The Last Stand was uh, forgettable. To me, it was forgettable. There wasn't really much that kind of engaged me, any kind of characters. I didn't really care for Schwarzenegger's character. Mm. Have you ever cared for a Schwarzenegger character, though, in a movie? No. Not counting the Terminator movies, maybe? No, but uh, old Schwarzenegger movies had real explosions and violence. 
Yeah, in those regards, this was better than those awful Expendables movies. Uh, for me, I, I enjoyed the movie more than I thought I would. I kind of pictured it, it's a shame we saw it in the theater, because I, I was picturing it like the type of movie that we watch when we have a group of friends over, and we're just like constantly yelling at the screen during, during the boring parts, like, come on, get out with it, and then cheering during the horrible, stupid action and bad comedy, and it felt like one of those sort of like fun, bad movies to me. Um, it, it's hampered a bit by the fact that it does have some digital blood explosions, blood a spurts. I, it, in the movie's logic, the human body is filled with a red mist that vanishes. Yeah. yeah. I, I think I some of that, that was lot. actual. It, it was weird. Uh -huh. It was confusing because there was a mix of, unlike the Expendables movies, especially Expendables 2, where every blood spurt is a, is a very obvious, cheap plug-in effect. Uh, this one felt like it did have some actual blood Yeah, spurts. I'm sure it did. I don't uh, know. I, I, I feel cheated when I go to see an action movie and you can tell all the gunfire is fake and all the blood splatters are fake. Yeah. It's like when you go watch a, like, like a, a horror movie and the blood splatters are fake. That's what you go to watch those movies for. I go to watch an action movie for an action movie. Um, and some of it, I mean, some of it was okay. I, I mentioned to you the uh, there's a chase scene at the end of uh, Schwarzenegger is chasing the drug cartel guy. They're having a car chase through a cornfield. And, um, you know, some a lot of it was um, digitally enhanced. And I could be wrong completely. I don't know. But um, I'm thinking if you drive a car through a cornfield and you run on the camera over it, it's not going to look super exciting. And I could tell, like, a lot of it looked fake, but the tires are kicking up extra dust extra debris flying up, and all that looked kind of phony. See, I didn't notice that. I definitely noticed the end action, then fist fight scene, where it looked like the room, when they're on the roof. Oh. The room. Green screen. That all, that, all that bridge stuff looked completely green screen. Why would it need to be? I, because they don't want to shoot on a real high bridge. But you don't have to. You just put the bridge on the ground and film at eye level. Yeah, but then you have to film outside. Here you can film the nice... Uh, comfy, warm studio. I guess so. It wasn't as bad as the other Twilight. No. <laughs> you said not running around in a frozen place. No. Down. And that's the frustrating thing about this movie is that I would have liked it more if there were more practical stuff. But like you mentioned, the uh, the, the cornfield chase scene, I liked that idea. I liked that as an action sequence. Mm -hmm. And there were real cars in it, and there were real cars yeah. smashing into other real cars. Yeah. And I liked all of that stuff. I thought it was fun. The movie it, takes a long time to get going. The first half of it was like, I don't care about these FBI guys. Like, just get the 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 villains in a small town and have people shoot at each other. Yeah. And that's when it got fun. We've got a cartel with heavy fire now headed towards a boy. There's a strong chance we're coming your way. I know what's coming. Schwarzenegger plays a small town sheriff. Uh, and, and the FBI is, uh, is taking a drug cartel guy to, they're moving him from one location to another, he escapes, and they, they fail at numerous attempts to recapture him. So Schwarzenegger's small town of um, something, something Arizona, right on the border of Mexico, is the last stand where this guy gets back to Mexico. Dangerous drug cartel guy. He shot a uh, loving FBI character that we knew for 15 minutes. So, uh, and drug cartels are genuinely bad. Yeah. I love drugs. Huh. And you gotta get drugs from somewhere. So I really actually don't mind drug cartels. God I damn it. To get back into Mexico and continue to move drugs across the border. Because, I mean, where are you gonna get it? I guess we were supposed to care that he got across the border, and I guess we were supposed to care that Schwarzenegger stopped him. We were supposed to care because the movie gave us five minutes to, like, a, a, uh, a cop named Jerry who had dreams of getting out of the small town into the big city. That was our own motivation. Um, and that's what I mean by, by kind of by the numbers predicting the script, because as you start the movie off, and um, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of influences all over the place. Schwarzenegger used to be, he's not just a bumbling small town sheriff, he used to be a narcotics guy in Los Angeles who did this big drug bust. Yeah. Convenient. Uh, the guy in their prison cell is the boyfriend of one of the cops, and he, uh, he used to be an Iraq war vet. Or he is an Iraq war vet. Now he's got a drinking problem, though, and he causes problems in the small town. So, yes, he's going to prove himself and be used in the end when they need people to help 
stop the drug cartel. Um, uh, oh, and then Johnny Knoxville plays a kooky guy. And anytime you have a kooky guy in a movie, they've got to wear the hat with the ear things. I thought Johnny Knoxville was very effective as uh, in a very sort of subtle and, and sensitive performance of a mentally challenged person. So he, this character uh, conveniently has an arsenal in, in his barn because he likes guns. So, wow, is that going to come into play later? And See, then, you're saying all these things as if they're negative in a movie like this. No, it's a fine, fine script. Yeah. It's by the numbers. Like I said, it's it's fine, but you know, that's not the payoff for me. The being invested in the story isn't the payoff. It's the action. I mean, I thought the action was just subpar. Just subpar. Schwarzenegger looks like a very, very old man. Yes. And and now, you know, we, we talked about this before, like. There was, there's three periods of Schwarzenegger. Early period, which which ended in um, uh, kind of the, the when he's in the downslope of his action career, with his like end of days, um, collateral damage. When it's like, okay, he's getting tired, you're getting old. And then he becomes the governor of California. That's phase two, and now he's back and it's a nostalgia. Yeah. And third phase is nostalgia. So it's like, okay, yeah, he's uh, 108 years old or whatever. And, he looks incredibly awkward when he's firing the Gatlin gun, like Helen Mirren firing the Gatlin gun. He's like, Grant, Grant was firing the machine gun. These are all the reasons I like this movie. But it's like a guilty pleasure bad movie. I have to say, his acting is hilariously bad. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's gotten much worse. And it oh, didn't yeah. start from a good place to begin with. Well, that's what's funny is he's such an interesting movie star. And I would call him a movie star. He's not an actor. He's a movie star in like yeah. the traditional sense of like everybody knows who he is. There's very distinct traits about him yeah. that everybody knows and everybody likes him. But he's never ever been any good. It's not a tumor. Put that cookie down. Give this people here. But he has some sort of charisma or something that you're drawn to. <laughs> Even though he is old in this movie, it was still sort of nice to see that in a way where. It wasn't precious. Like, it wasn't... This whole movie was very sort of stripped down. Oh, kind of brother. Like, like, 80s style yeah. action movie without it being self-conscious about it or or um, really playing up the, the cheap, easy, precious nostalgia like yeah. those god-awful Expendables movies. Schwarzenegger old and say these well all the catchphrase the attempts at catchphrases in this movie and the attempts at comedy were horrible in a way that was charming to me like you have the old lady that yeah. shoots it's like a groaner you know things like that um we have all these these wonderful character actors doing really bizarre performances like Peter Stormare as the the second main bad guy like what was that accent what was he doing it was like foreign but with a like american southern twang like i don't know what he was trying to do and that was amusing louise guzman shooting people with an uzi uh was he entertaining a to me gun. or a tommy gun sorry um uh harry dean stanton shows up to be old and cranky because that's what harry dean stanton does these days yeah uh all, all these things I, I thought the movie was cute I, I wish we weren't watching it in the theater so I could laugh out loud at the things you that weren't supposed to be funny. funny. Did you find it funny bad? I only found, uh, like, I, I found it not, not funny bad in the way that a movie like, you know, The Room is just completely inept. Sure. I found it uh, funny in how sort of, like, simple it was, if that makes sense. Where it's like all these all these tropes, all these tropes that you don't see anymore. Oh, because most fucking movies are so overblown, yeah. overinflated, yeah. self-conscious, or they're just like superhero movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, every action movie is about people trying to save the world. And, and there's a nice simplicity to the fact that this movie ends with just two guys fist fighting. Yeah. And I liked that. I liked those aspects of the movie a lot. Um, I might be building the movie up more than it should because it's not a great movie, but it was uh, sort of refreshing in how sort of simple and dumb it was. I, see, I didn't... I guess I couldn't tell if 
if they were going for like cute nostalgia kind of stuff, like with with the old lady, with with um, the, the people that refuse to leave the coffee shop. I'm like, is it are they, are they a, is it a genuine attempt at humor or is it a genuine attempt at nostalgia kind of action movie stuff? I don't know. It all felt flat for me. Well, one thing to note in, in regards to the tone and what it was trying to do is is uh, we should mention that the film was directed by a South Korean filmmaker named... And this is his first American movie. Uh, he made a really great movie called I Saw the Devil, uh, if you haven't seen it. It's a really good sort of revenge movie, violent revenge film. Uh, a horror film called The Tale of Two Sisters. That's really good. Quit title dropping, you neck-bearded hipster. Is that what you are when you recommend good movies yeah that automatically makes you a hipster yeah i don't understand these things i just like watching movies that don't suck continue i i don't know i kind of get the vibe like when we talk about a movie like russian terminator where it's like a, a foreign person trying to make an american style action movie uh, i kind of see this as being you know this director has probably seen all the 80s action movies all the old schwarzenegger movies and is trying to make a movie like that so I would say it's a it's a sincere attempt at making kind of an older stripped down action movie. I, I bad s- comedy and all. It looks like nothing. It's sensational. It just looks people in a car, action shots, people firing. There is nothing that. I, stood I out. thought there was a lot more energy to the action scenes that you could follow than a lot of action movies nowadays. It's not the shaky cam. We've we've complained about that a lot. Yeah. You know what's happening, and uh, I, I don't know. The only thing that took away from some of the impact of it was the, the CG gore. Yeah, I like, there's a, a moment that would be wonderful in another movie where a guy explodes, and his little arm comes down and flops oh, around. Right, it was looks, very looks, obviously looks CG. Terrible. Yeah, and it takes you out of it a bit. I, I don't even, I, I mean, Oof. I don't think the action scenes were that well Oof. done. What a suck no, fest. Just, it just looked like a generic, like, made for TV movie. There was nothing sensational or exceptional about this movie. Uh-huh. In any way. It was it was a acceptable action movie. I watched it. I, I got nothing out of it. Speaking of blah, we should mention that the actresses in this movie all look exactly the same. They do. Every single female character in this movie looked like the same actress. Uh-huh. There's the FBI lady that's in the car uh-huh. with uh, the drug cartel guy the waitress in town, and the one female cop. Especially the waitress and the cop. I was like, is she, does she work part-time at the diner? And then part-time as a cop? But then it turned out it was two people. Maybe those are the type of ladies Schwarzenegger likes to bang. He's like, cast her and her and her. They all look like my maid. Would you recommend the, recommend the Last Stand? No. Would you recommend Just fucking... The God damn it! What a piece of shit. 50, 52! Fucking Christ. Uh, at the beginning, uh, of the <sighs> what a fucking crock of fucking shit. Drink beer and watch at home with a group of people and just laugh because it's just so dumb. But it's charm. It's charmingly dumb. Well, I, I will disagree. I uh, I got nothing out of this other other than by the numbers movie action movie that didn't really engage me. The action wasn't particularly exciting to me. It was just sort of filmed. Schwarzenegger jumps out of a window with a bad guy and shoots him in the head as they're falling down. Something like that is fun. Computer generated blood flies. You're like a like a like a <laughs> yeah, kind of bad. You're like a grinch. I, I yeah, my heart is black as coal. I know it, Jay. I know it. Um, no, I, I I love action movies, and I love I mean I love Judge Dredd because uh, Judge Dredd was great. That was genuinely good. I though, enjoyed the premise to. of that. Yeah, this the premise was okay. Everything about it was just okay. It was like a flat line for me, with a mild heartbeat here and there when I laughed at Arnold Schwarzenegger's acting. Mm. Which is just like him going blah 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 blah. It's it's incredibly bad. I, I would recommend it on that aspect. You know, <laughs> you know, come for the first half an hour and just watch him try to say lines. <laughs> wow, you're looking jacked. You've been working out. A 
Haunted House is another one of those spoof movies. You know, those. <coughs> it's made by Marlon Wayans. You know, him. <coughs> he makes those spoof movies. This is another one of them. They no longer shoot these movies on real film, or else we'd have to lament the waste of precious film stock on this piece of garbage. The only precious resource wasted was people's time, energy, effort, money, and reputations. Jay, I know what you thought of a haunted house. Mike, I know what you thought of a haunted house. I would not recommend a haunted house. Neither would I. Thank you, and good night. Well, let me ask you a question. Yes. This is one of those movies that comes out in the early months of the year. A Fuck You, It's January movie. Sure. Obviously terrible. Yeah. You see the trailers, and you say, oh, it's one of those. Why did we see it? Why were we in the theater watching A Haunted House starring Marlon Wayans and co-starring Farts? Well, quite frankly, Jay, um, I heard good things about Mama, and... Uh, I, 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 I didn't care to see that when I saw the, um, the trailer. I was like, uh, you know. So I, I, I saw this, um, uh, I, I, of course, hated the Paranormal Activity movies. And I saw that there was a new spoof movie out. And I have never seen one of those spoof movies. Scary movie, uh, 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 disaster movie, all, all those, those spoof movies. Never seen one. Okay. So I, I, I figured, you know, let's, uh, let's give it a shot. And I'll see if anything in it uh, makes me laugh. And uh, I wanted to kill myself <laughs> in the theater. I, I literally wanted, I wanted to leave numerous times. Uh, but what I really wanted was earplugs. <laughs> have seen those other movie movies. I've Fuck. seen other modern spoof movies. The the modern age of spoof movies started with a scary movie. That was the one that sort of has, has led to what this horrible plague in our nation known as spoof movies has become. And this movie is right in line with those. Uh, so I had no interest in seeing it. Uh, not even in a, oh, we'll go see it and make fun of it. I, I knew exactly what it would be. <sighs> And the first thing I said after we got out of the movie was we could have just we could have not seen the movie and done the exact same review that we would do if we had seen the movie. Yeah. It's exactly what you would expect from a film like this. Yeah. It's the most cheap, obvious, uh, lowest common denominator attempts at jokes. Oh, that thing goes there, and then the longboard goes on there, and it's not I think over. Is a simpleton uh, who happens to have a man's name. And he, you know, he has clout and money and power. And there didn't need to be a script, which was the one thing that, that how it started off. It's yeah. like, we don't need a story because those paranormal activity movies don't have a story. It's the girl moves into the house and things happen and then demonic noises. And we're just going to have a series of scenes where we um, spoof uh, things that have happened in other horror movies. Like, they, they went all over the place. They did The Exorcist. They did the recent um, The Devil Inside the connect the cuts, connect the cuts part. Yeah. They did, um, gosh, uh, a lot of other things. Um, the Last Exorcism was in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so all that stuff kind of, it was mainly paranormal activities spoof with a sprinkling of other kind of references. Yeah. But there were no specific jokes. There were just, um, just kind of, they, they would bring in actors, Nick Swartzen, uh, Cedric the Entertainer, and they just kind of said, here's your character, say weird things. And, and Nick Swartzen played a, a psychic uh, who was a, a homosexual. And the joke was he was attracted to men. The Todd Packard character, I forget that actor's name. Uh, he, will, he will forever be Todd Packard. <laughs> David um, Keckner is Yeah, he, he comes in there and, uh, you know, he he's starts making, racist. He starts, his thing is he's racist. Yeah. And there's this really, really awkward moment where he's like, I want to say the N-word. I want to say the N-word. And, and, 
uh, Marlon Wayans is like, no, don't do that, I'll punch you in the face, and then it just ends. No, that's the yeah. end. If you say the N-word, I will punch you in the face. Yeah, Awkward yeah. silence, cut, end of scene. Right, right. And that felt like something that came out of, like, a whole afternoon of improv, yeah. where they're just saying weird things, and then you just do lots of quick jump cuts and reduce the scene down to, oh, he's racist. The best parts you have. The best parts you have. The bar. Are you gonna go to get this demon out? I'll do anything. What is this supposed to do? It's just got weird. Well, let's let's assume that there was a script. Maybe we're wrong about the improv thing. We really don't know. Okay. Uh, is that worse? Yes. Because a script you 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 write before you start filming to have time to think about things, which is why if, if there is a written body credit. Marlon Wayans and somebody else. Yeah. So I just think if there was, if those were the lines that they gave Todd Packer, like, here are lines, um, yes, it's much, much worse. I can see them, uh, Todd Packer, Nick Swartzen, Cedric the Entertainer, who, who he was the funniest one out of everybody. Um, Cedric the Entertainer. Yeah. I can see them showing up and going, we don't have a script. We're, this, we're just fucking around and we're going to make a whole shitload of money. Yeah. Just do something funny. Um, I, I, can, I can forgive them. Yeah. Like for not having enough material to work with, and for just not having a good day uh, at doing improv. But when you have a script ahead of time, where you're like, well, "I'm going to write these funny scenes," it's it's the um, the complete lack of effort, yeah, and, and the complete lack of intelligence that that really sinks this movie and movies like it. To the Tara Dolls of one day! Right, right. What you taping for, Keisha? We thugs, we can't be on no TV! Wait to get my hands on this boot! Show yourself! No, don't do that! Two more one day! What happened to your furniture, cuz? I will say, for the majority of this movie, like, there are other actors in it, but a, a large chunk of it is the Marlon Wayans show. And it's, it's like watching somebody just horribly embarrass himself for 90 minutes. Yeah. There are other actors in the movie, but he over, overshadows all of them. It's like like watching the Star Wars kid video. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this, Jay. What makes a parody funny? I, I was kind of thinking about this in the, in the movie theater. Um, take, like, Weird Al Yankovic. Like, what makes his parody songs funny? Yeah. They, like a virgin, he turns into like a surgeon. That in itself isn't funny. It's it's the lyrics that he, he adds to it that yeah. are clever. I think it's sort of like, okay, it has the funny beat, and its lyrics are clever. This movie, it's, it's well, our movie looks like paranormal activity, but nothing in the movie is clever. There's no, no clever lyrics, per se. There's yeah. no clever script. It's just art. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, that's, yeah, I, I don't think parody in and of itself is terribly funny. Uh, I, 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 it's not a, a genre I've ever really connected with, uh, but I like a lot of movies that would fall into that, like like Airplane, like Naked Gun, actually. There's the joke you always bring up from Police Squad, the series that Naked Gun was based on. Who are you, and how did you get in here? I'm a locksmith, and I'm a locksmith. You don't have to have any connection with police dramas, police shows, to get why that is funny and clever. It's a funny joke. It's, you know? it's, 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 it's a framework. You take a genre or you take a style, and that's your framework. Yeah. But you have to have actual constructed jokes within that yeah. to to hold it all together. Yeah. Unless you're unless you're mocking the genre, because you, you take a look at Mel Brooks's Space Balls. Um, that's another thing where. It, it's a little mixture of both. It's kind of, there, there's, like, they, they spoof the, uh, the, the famous uh, uh, Star Destroyer wrong. And, it, you know, it, it goes on for a little while, but then they take it to the extreme, and they have the ship going on for ten minutes in the opening credit. That's spoof. Yeah. That's taking some, some material and making fun of it. This movie does a, a Haunted House does a couple of things like that, but, but not really. Um, but, I Actually, I would say the one thing that maybe would have been funny in this movie that wasn't, because I was just so and tired was when Marlon Wayne's character realizes that the house is genuinely haunted and his immediate oh, yeah. reaction is to pack up and move out. What are you doing? Bitch, there's a ghost in the house. Deuces. That, that was a legitimate spoof joke yeah. because you, you'd say, in this genre of haunted house movies, why don't they just get the fuck out right away? 
instead of staying there, dealing with the girls, just get out, move out right away. And, and that's what the reaction people have. And then when they spoof that, that's what we're going to do. Right. If, if you were to write a spoof movie about girls, like what you do, I, I guess you would... You would huh, that wasn't very close. On, uh, all, the, all the elements <clears throat> in it. The, the, the idea of, like, they had a scene, there, there's uh, the Todd Patrick character, that comes, and he has the other guy with the camera. And I'm like, okay, this is going to be a joke. And it didn't turn out to be a joke. It turned out to be another reason for them to have a camera, which is something they do in those movies. Yeah. But you could turn that in itself into a joke. Like, yeah. Who's got the camera? Like, who, we have six cameras going, and this one's filming this one. And, yeah. And you could have a, a funny, like, we didn't catch it on film. This amazing thing happened. Who, who was supposed to be running the camera? Right, right. Well, Bob, where did you leave the camera? You know, yeah. The, you, you, the, the logic of the movie is that there's cameras everywhere. You can make a joke out of that. Yeah. Like, a joke of the ghost of it. Well, another thing that people always bring up with the, the found footage type movies is why are people still filming? Mm -hmm. You can do something with that, yeah. like, like uh, uh, some dumb joke about yeah. why they're just filming everything yeah. all the time. If you, you just want to, to think about it for more than two seconds, yeah. not slap your script together well, in a weekend. Well, it's easier to slap in racist, racism, misogyny, homophobia, and all those kind of like lowbrow, yeah. um, bad and fart jokes. Just we'll throw in, throw in all the easy to do stuff um, on top of this premise. Yeah. You know what? There is some dark energy over here. Really? Yeah. Oh, it's me! Oh, it's me! Oh, it's me! Why are you getting into my bolts? I'm protecting them from spirits. So, Jay, yeah, would you say the humor in this movie is pathetic, desperate, uh, sickening, lowbrow, bottom of the barrel, uh, disgusting? Uh, yes. Every yes. other adjective in yes. the world. And there are there are things that sort of advertise themselves as that, as like that's the point. Like it's offensive, in your face, and that type of stuff. Um, but this is one where it's just yeah, just really pathetic is the best word to describe it. Yeah. Where it's feeding off of stereotypes, where the joke is not anything clever. It is. Ha ha! Laugh at him because he's gay. Yeah. Which we kind of touched on when we talked about uh, uh, that's my boy, the Adam Sandler movie. This is another case of that. Yeah. Uh, even worse, yeah. if that's hard, if that's possible. Yeah. There, there were other elements in this. There's, there's racism humor. Well, like... the thing with with the racist stuff though is you can always use the excuse it's funny because you're laughing at the racist. Yeah. And that's different than the gay character. Well, this had the the gay jokes which I, it stuck out to me as the most offensive um, because there was no, like, yeah, the, the Todd Packard, Packard character is ignorant and he's making racist comments, but the, the joke in the Nick Swartzen character was that he was gay. Uh, and, and, of course, every homosexual that, that finds another male attractive instantly just starts crying to grab their crotch or to make references about giving them oral sex and grabbing their ass. And all See, I think you're giving the movie too much credit. I think the joke was that every homosexual wants to have sex with every man, period. Oh, okay. Was it I just... don't think it was, I don't think Nick Sparson's character was necessarily attracted to Marlon Wayne's. He was, Marlon Wayne's was just a man. Yeah. So he obviously had to act like a, like a, like a horny weirdo. Okay. Okay. And that was the joke. Oh, it was even worse than I thought. Yeah. It's not um, perceptions of stereotypes. It's not perception of this or that. And and it's... Fucking suck a fuck. Jesus fuck. Shit fuck. So, Bitch fuck. So fuck fuck. Sad. <laughs> sad and pathetic. <clears throat> describe it as we've said, yeah. Well, and